Hi everybody, my name is Abe Brown and I'm with Certified Flourishing Coaching and I just want to take a couple of moments and speak with you today about six secrets of high performers. Now a little while ago I saw a statistic that really kind of floored me and it was this, that just 16% of people are classified as high performers. 16, that's one six. About 68% are average performers and then the other 16% are considered low performers. Now of course, we all love everybody. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to fulfilling your dream, living the life that you've imagined for yourself, and actually crushing your goals, every single one of us could learn the secrets of high performers, right? We don't want to, we don't want to be stuck in average. We want to have the capacity to move beyond average to the fulfillment of being an actual high performer. So what are some secrets of high performers? Now, in my life, I've been super blessed as an executive coach and a leadership coach to rub shoulders with some super high-level people from billionaires to inventors to high-level people in government, you name it. And, you know, most of the time when I get around them, I actually ask them, how did you kind of get to where you are? And so they'll talk about education, they'll talk about surface things, but I want to go deeper. I want to find out what were the habits, what were the actual daily routines that you drilled into? And when I've asked these folks, you know, kind of what were your daily routines, what were your daily habits, not a single one of them said, well, I just got here by luck. Every single one of them had a set of specific practices that they leveraged on a daily basis. Now, not perfectly, because of course, who among us, uh, you know, bats it out of the park every single time. But these high performers had sharpened their life to the point that it was a finely tuned instrument, and now all of that fine tuning that they had done in private was actually showing up in public, and that's what I want for myself. And I know it's what you want for yourself. So what are some of the secrets of these high performers that I've learned in some of my conversations over the years? I'm just going to share with you six of them really quickly. Here we go. Number one, manage your mission. Now, at the end of the day, life is filled with all kinds of distractions. As a matter of fact, we have never been in an era with more distractions than we have today, primarily because of these things. Now, our your mobile phones, our smartphones have brought so much joy and productivity to our lives, but as we all know, because we're all wrestling with it, they've also brought this massive feeling of overwhelm because there's so many things that we could focus on. What should we focus on? One of the things that makes a high performer a high performer and separates them from an average performer is just this sheer thing of having a mission that leads them to a place of focus. Now, you know, I heard this German proverb once and it says this, if you chase two rabbits, both will escape, right? In other words, here I am trying to get too many things done and it's just not possible. Why? Because all of us have a certain limitation when it comes to bandwidth. And so if you want to be a high performer, I'll tell you what, number one, manage your mission. This speaks to focus. It speaks to being able to say yes to some things and no to other things. The second secret of high performers in and, and my conversations with them is this, manage your motivation. Now motivation, one way to think about motivation is fuel. You know, when I went through a major crash in my own life several years ago and decided that that I was really interested in rebuilding my life. I had a number of obstacles to overcome in the rebuilding phase. It wasn't easy to rebuild and it's still not because it's a daily process. But, but the motivation that I had, you know, because my dad had walked out and I had lived a life as a fatherless kid and experiencing some abuse and some hardship and some difficulties. And the motivation for me was I didn't want my kids to experience that. Now, I haven't been a perfect father, that's for sure. But that one motivation, just that fuel, allowed me to power through the obstacles that I needed. And every high performer that I've talked to, you know, I'll tell you what, they haven't had this, you know, sort of lame motivation just to make more money. Uh, obviously, we all need to make money to survive, but the truly high performers are motivated by a higher calling. It's something that's pulling them from within. Maybe it's a dream to, you know, cure cancer. Maybe it's a dream to help those who are marginalized, those who are victimized, those who uh, are less fortunate than them. Maybe it's a dream just to be a better dad than they had or a better mom, a better parent, a better person. But I'll tell you what, if you uh, have that motivation in your life, the problem is life will hit it, you know, with all kinds of things. And it so becomes easy, it becomes so easy to drop that motivation 
and that passion and exchange it with just a desire to survive. And so I just encourage you, number one, if you want to be a high performer to manage your mission, mission speaks to focus, but number two, to manage your motivation. Don't let life knock out your motivation because your motivation is your fuel. The third thing I've discovered about high performers is that they manage their map. Now, when I say their map, what do I mean? I mean, obviously, you could go to Google Maps or Apple Maps or something like that. But what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a map is what is your daily routine? What is your daily routine? Now, you know, at the end of the day, the only thing that really separates you from me, from anyone else, is the fact that we choose differently how we'll use our time. We've all heard people say, and I've said it too in the past, so I don't want to judge anybody. Uh, We all said, man, I wish I had more hours in the day. I wish my day today had 28 hours instead of 24. But you know, Mother Teresa, she only had 24 hours in the day. Martin Luther King Jr., he only had 24 hours in the day. Abraham Lincoln, 24 hours. Nelson Mandela, 24 hours. Now, I don't say that as any kind of judgment. I say that simply because I'm struggling just like you to try to figure out with this 24-hour allocation that I have, what's the best use of my time, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I can't manage a whole bunch of things. I can't manage the government. I can't manage my, the, the rate of tax I pay. I can't manage all of the challenges related to weather. I can't manage so many things. But what I can do is take this allocation of a day, this day that I've got, and I might not even have tomorrow, and manage Manage this one day well. And let me just tell you this. You deserve to give that gift to yourself. You deserve to give that gift to yourself of honoring the time that you have so that you don't get distracted by silly, you know, social media, little back and forth, or get distracted by silly little relationships that don't actually lead to anything. But you owe it to yourself to respect your day, to respect your time, so that you maximize your value to yourself and obviously, ultimately, to the world. And so, first secret of high performers, manage your mission. That's all about your focus. The second is manage your motivation. That's your fuel. But the third is manage your map, because I've got the same 24 hours you've got, and we've all got the same 24 hour allocation. So we gotta manage that, and that speaks to forming. How am I gonna form the 24 hour period that I have? The fourth secret that I've discovered of high performers is to manage your mind. Now, you think about your mind, right? I know at least for me, my mind is both my greatest asset and my greatest liability. And all I mean by that is I've, I dream some great dreams in my brain and I accomplish and create some great things with this brain of mine. But I tell you what, I sometimes get so stuck inside my head where sometimes anxiety will take over, the comparison trap will take over, imposter syndrome will take over, my old fear will take over. I mean, I, I'm sure you can identify. We've all got uh, uh, this brilliance in our mind, this beauty, this almost breathtaking capacity to innovate and create. And then we've all got this, like, just got the breath knocked out of me part of us, which is like, wow, I can't really accomplish anything if I'm stuck in the amygdala trap, if I'm stuck in that place where my fears and my anxieties are controlling me. Now, when you think about your mind, what you're actually thinking about is how are you framing the day? How are you framing the day? Because when you think about your mind and your mindset, you can approach every challenge. You know, Carol Dweck said this way back in 1999 with a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. Now, a growth mindset sees challenges and adversity and even obstacles as opportunities to next level their growth. Whereas that fixed mindset looks at all of the problems and challenges and says, well, you know, it's just a horrible thing to be me. I am who I am. That's all that I am. And I guess I'm not going to be able to change. I'm not going to be able to evolve. I'm not going to be able to become anyone greater than I am right now, which of course we know is not true. You have such amazing potential to evolve, to grow, and to flourish at higher levels. But without that growth mindset, it becomes really difficult to move into that place. And so, hey, if I'm going to be a high performer, I've got to manage my mind. Number five is you've got to manage your mood. (laughs) Okay, now you might say, what does my mood have to do with it? I'll tell you what, your mood has everything to do with it. Think about your last time of having a great mood, you know, when you were like ready to crush it. How much did you accomplish? I'll bet you you surprised yourself with how much you accomplished and you patted yourself on the back at the end of the day and maybe even rewarded yourself with a nice meal or dinner with some friends. But we've all also had those times when 
we just got a bad mood. Like it's just like we're just not in the right headspace. We're just not happy. We're not feeling empowered. And obviously, you look at what you perform and what you produce in that place. And I think we all know that it's not good, right? As a matter of fact, it's it's almost like I I have wasted days looking at the computer just because my mood was off. Now you might say, well, hey, Abe, that's great. Okay, I know I need to manage my mood, but but how do I do that? Because you know it's not like we can just flick a dial or download an app to manage our mood. But here's what I've discovered. I've discovered that my mood is the byproduct, my daily mood is the byproduct of my daily routine of self-care. And so if I'm managing my self-care on a daily basis, getting in my exercise, eating my nutrition, getting my sleep done, doing my meditation, my journaling, I've got some specific practices, I'm sure you've got some of yours as well, what happens is the outcome is my mood improves. But if I'm not managing those daily practices very well, obviously life is going to get you down. And so, you know, when I talk about your mood, this is really about flourishing because flourishing is about feeling good and functioning well. At Certified Flourishing Coaching, we have an evidence-based coaching model based on the science of flourishing. So we're experts on the science of flourishing. And one of the things you discover about people who flourish and thrive is that they actually have an elevated mood, not because they're like super hyper positive, but because they've invested in a set of practices and routines on, a, on the daily that allows them to care for themselves to the point that they're not going around de, you know, depleted with no energy and completely drained, but they're actually already replenished. And that's because they're replenishing themselves. I mean, hey, you can't help anyone else if you're not in a place where you yourself are thriving. And so, you know, hey, I would encourage you if you want to be a high performer to pay a lot of attention to your mood and to cultivate those practices that help you perform at a higher level. And that takes us to number six. The sixth secret for, uh, of high performers that I've noticed in my career is to manage, and this one might surprise you, but to manage your mistakes. Now, mistakes are all about finesse. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, here's the reality, folks. We all make mistakes. And when you think about mistakes, you can all either look at your mistakes as, man, I just stumbled downhill and now I'm completely shattered. Or you can actually look at your mistakes as you stumbling uphill as you're on your way from one level to the next. And so mistakes, I said earlier, they're kind of about finesse, but really what I mean to say is they're about fine tuning. In other words, my mistakes actually help me to fine tune my approach next time so that I do even better than I did this time. And so I call this falling forward or failing forward. I call this stumbling uphill. I'm getting better, not by sitting in some laboratory in a white coat, never being exposed to the real world, but just studying everybody else. No, no. I get better by getting out there with my sleeves rolled up in the trenches, trying to make it happen, trying to build my business, trying to support my family, trying to love the people that I'm called to love and be the best person, best coach, best speaker, best leader, best whatever that I can be. And along the way, of course, I'm going to make mistakes because that's part of the growth process. But part of that growth process is learning from those mistakes so that the next time you fine tune. And I remember when I was very young, you know, talking to a high performer and saying, man, like, you know, I was like in awe that this person wanted to have even a conversation with me and saying to them, wow, how did you get where you are? And remember this person said, well, I just keep making mistakes. And the difference between me and others is that after I make those mistakes, I get back up and I keep going and I learn from them along the way. And so, you know, uh, at one time somebody said that a wise man uh, learns from his own mistakes and a doubly wise person learns from the mistakes of others. And so what's so great about this sixth sort of secret of high performers is you're managing mistakes. Guess what? You can also learn not only from your own mistakes but from the mistakes of others. So thanks for taking a few minutes and checking out this video, Six Secrets of High Performers. Number one, manage your mission. That's about your focus. Number two, manage your motivation. That's about your fuel. Number three, manage your map. That's your daily plan. And this is about forming, forming, forming. Number four, manage your mind. That's about framing. Number five, manage your mood because your mood is all about your flourishing. And number six, manage your mistakes 
because your mistakes are all about the fine tuning process of you and I getting better each and every day. So please do check us out. Our website is certifiedflourishingcoach.com. That's certifiedflourishingcoach.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram under that same social handle, Certified Flourishing Coach. And thank you for checking us out. Have an amazing day, an amazing week. And go out there and perform at the highest level that you can and evolve into that next level every day.